why I wrote the book is honestly, I have a story to tell as we all have a story to tell. And what I realized on my journey was a lot of us don't believe that we can achieve the impossible. And along my journey, I started realizing, man, I gotta fucking tell some people about this shit, man. Like I discovered something that some people have but they don't even fucking know. All of us have it. But along this way, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't a theorist. I became a practitioner. And I was like, my God, I'm busting down so many barriers of, like, I have a learning disability. Okay. But I'm catching up with everybody. I, I figured that out. I figured out all these negative things in my life that were keeping me in this hole. I'm like, I got to tell people, man, that, hang on a second, man. You can fucking achieve the absolute impossible. You don't need great parents. You don't need like a private school. You don't need to have this humongous GPA and all this other shit. What you need is the one thing I talked about in my book, which is straight up brutal work ethic. You have to be willing to outwork everybody in the world. And that, that that's the hard part. That's the hard part. This isn't like some five step process where you can do these five fucking steps. You're gonna end up with this magical world. No. I'm basically teaching you how to callous over your victim's mentality. I'm teaching you how to, like I did 67,000 pull-ups and training for the pull-up. I was seriously callous in my hands to protect them. What I'm trying to do with people is teach them how to find more themselves to where they empower themselves. I'm all about the underdog. So that's all that, so that's what the book's all about, man. It's all about having that step process and I had to share this with people. Well, words started making me, I, I had to stop giving a fuck about people. That was the biggest thing. I had to stop caring what people thought about me. I realized that everybody's fucked up. That's the one thing I realized. I walked around and I put these people on a, a fucking pedestal. Everybody was better than me. So I can't tell you anything about me because you're going to judge me and I'm going to feel even worse than what I am. What I realized, once I calmed my mind down and sat back and looked at how jacked up this world is, once you realize that you are not alone, everybody that's talking to you about how jacked up you are, only thing they've done better than you is they've hidden their fucked up world better than you have. That's all they've done. So once I realize that, if you want to sit back, and, like for instance, there's all these things that are on TV and we have all these news people judging people who fuck up in life. Yeah, they made big mistakes. But that person who is judging you on TV, I guarantee to you that that news person and say, I'm glad that my shit didn't come out, but I'm going to judge the hell out of you. I know that about people. So if you want to sit back and judge how jacked up I was and how messed up my life was, Merry Christmas, go for it. Have a good time. But I'm smiling at you right now, knowing you have a secret that you're not willing to share. It gives you a lot of power when you're able to go on a podcast this big and say, Hey, Tell me, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I no longer care. And that is a lot of power in that. To be able to put your life on a billboard for the whole world to see and say, judge it, man. Judge it. Like just me talking about it makes me feel good. And that's, and that's another thing about it. When you are willing to talk about how jacked up you are, the strength, that big rock that you carry, it just starts to come off you. It just starts to come off. That's why I do it so often. I'm like, hey, man, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of not telling you shit. I'm tired of lying about how good I'm not. When I got through with that first 100-mile race that I did around that one-mile track that I didn't prepare for, and I was considerably... It was horrible. And I'll never forget, I found such peace and beauty. And I got there. I was in the worst pain in my fucking life. And I got done and my wife pulled the car up on the, my ex-wife pulled the car up on this little lawn. And I got in the back of it. And I got up the stairs. I'm not going to go through the whole story. But I remember laying in the, in the tub. And she put the shower on me. And I ran 101 miles in like 19 hours. And I was like peeing dirt out of me. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm jackhammering. And my body is just the most broken it's ever been, even to this day. And this feeling came over me. Call it crazy if you want, but very few people, I guarantee, ever felt this before, to push themselves so far outside of what they thought was even possible, even for me. 
I laid in that tub and I didn't want it to go away. I had drained myself of every bit of strength, energy I had. And it was the best feeling I had in my life. All that pain, it was, it was confirmation. It was confirmation that I had gone through a crucible and I had figured out another level of David Goggins, a level that I thought was humanly impossible for anybody to do. When I was at mile 70 and shit and pissed all over myself, and I was able to go 31 more miles. In that process of the next 31 more miles, I found out more about myself in that 31 miles than I ever had in my entire life. The conversations, the mental blocks, the roadblocks, the everything horrible. It was just feeding at me like light speed. Get the fuck out of here, man. Like, but I was able to figure out different tactics. And when I finally got done with that, I laid in that tub and it was over. The feeling of, my God, man, you just really discovered a whole new world, a whole new part of the brain that guaranteed very few people have. So it's a, it's a feeling I can't even describe. If I'm a victim, then everyone else owes me something and I don't have to take any responsibility. And so one of the things I've wondered, here's something to think about. It might be that the sense of meaning that life can provide to you is proportionate to the amount of responsibility you decide to take on. Not, that'd be very strange if it was the case, you know, because responsibility, of course, is a kind of weight, obviously, and it's difficult to take on responsibility. But if any positive emotion that you feel and your control of anxiety and the control over pain is dependent on the activation of these systems that watch you move towards a desired goal, then the more complete and weighty the goal is, the more kick there's going to be in the observation that you're moving towards it. And if you take that majority of the capacity of your existence, then that happens. It actually works, and that's part of what everyone is called upon to discover in their life, and partly what religious stories try to remind people of, in some sense, to wake them up, say, you're more than you think you are. You're and this is another thing I realized on this tour, actually. I, I hadn't conceptualized this properly before. There's this old idea that the hero rescues his father from, from the abyss or from the belly of a great monster. Um, you see that reflected in, in stories like Pinocchio in, in the Disney movie because the puppet rescues Geppetto from the belly of a whale, the, the most terrifying possible place at the bottom of, of the lowest possible abyss. And what that means is this, is that if you stare, and this is, this is the answer to the Nietzschean dilemma. Nietzsche said, beware of staring. If you look long into an abyss, then the abyss looks into you. Well, if you look long enough into an abyss, then you discover something at the bottom of it. And what you discover at the bottom of it is your father. And what that means is that if you look at what terrifies you forthrightly enough, then you discover the spirit of your ancestors that you could become. And that won't be called out of you without that courageous confrontation. Because nothing is called out of you without it being demanded. It's the same as working out in a gym. You lift heavy weights, not so heavy that they hurt you, but heavy enough so that they're slightly beyond your capacity to grasp. Nothing is compelled out of you without necessity. And so then you ask, well, what if you subject yourself to the highest possible level of necessity? Maybe then the possibility is that the, the best there is is called forth out of you. And that's a union with all the great, that's the union with what's greatest about humanity in the past because that's in you. But it's not going to come out without compulsion and the compulsion that you set upon yourself. And so that's the antidote to the collectivist viewpoint. It's like, it's, it's your problem. And thank God for that. Because you need a problem to justify your miserable existence. And it has to be a problem of sufficient magnitude so that you can look yourself in the mirror when you wake up in the morning and you can think, well, despite my inadequacy and all the things about me that are insufficient, at least I'm bearing up under this worthwhile load. And that's a start.